So, welcome to the show with me, Dan, and my guest, Nick Twigger is back. How you doing? Thanks for having me back, buddy. No, oh, it's good to have you back, man. I, uh, Yeah, it's always a fascinating conversation and uh, it's always good fun. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, oh, I've already done, I'm just looking at my notes. I've already done an intro for you in the last episode, didn't I? Sort of how I got to know you and why I wanted you on the show. So, yeah, we covered that last time. Cool, cool. Sweet. Um, so what we're going to do with this episode is, uh, I don't know if you listened to the last one, uh, but if you didn't, then it might give you some context. But we were going to, uh, there's a thing online called the political compass, and you just answer like six pages of questions. Um, I can actually see how many questions there are total, um, in case you were thinking, oh, I don't want to do that many questions. 63 questions and uh that's way more than i thought it would be <laughs> yeah yeah so it might be a few episodes uh but 63 questions and you get four options strongly disagree disagree agree and strongly agree so it's it's pretty simple and then just sort of generic things about politics and at the end it gives you your results how left-wing you are economically or right-wing you are economically or if you're an authoritarian in terms of a big government and very imposing or you're libertarian so you just want people to be free um so yeah um we are going through each of the questions and we're not taking it too seriously in terms of the results or anything like that we're just sort of debating each of the questions and um yeah so far in the last episode there was a lot a lot that we agreed on at the start but then on the very last question we we touched upon i think it went on for like 20 25 minutes we were chatting about basically around uh giving people what they need and the whole idea of need and the difficulty with defining that um which sort of ties in with the welfare state but yeah um so we're just going to carry on with the the next question after that um but before we go ahead um me and nick uh wanted to just chat about something on air i guess um and after our conversation ended last week um there was a word that jumped out at me that that nick said and i i just wanted to chat to him about it um and uh yeah so the word he said was retarded um and i'll give you just the context in which he said it so we're all clear um there's no sort of yeah confusion about it um i said so this was a question i think it was one of the questions we were talking about uh, would you support your country um no matter what like if they were wrong if you knew your country was wrong would you support them so we were, we were just talking about that and we seem to pretty much agree on it anyway that you shouldn't support the country if you think they're wrong but anyway i said uh quote i guess this feeds into the whole nationalism thing of like you stick by your country no matter what. And then Nick said, our nationalism is the most retarded thing that's that's got to be going just because you were born in this patch of land. And then he goes on from there. Um, so just to... Sorry if you're just getting sick of my voice. Uh, we will bring Nick in. Um, but I just brought it up with Nick because I felt that retarded was a word that it's pretty much widely accepted that it's unacceptable and it's not a word to be used um in that context anymore and then i don't know if you wanted to sort of jump on from there nick and just see what your points of view were and chat a bit so it, it, this did come out to me a little bit out of the blue because i like a lot of my my you know close friends uh, do use this word mm -hmm. um just just but before I explain why I said it and, and the intention I meant with it, I, I wasn't trying to offend anyone. And if you were offended by it, I, I can't only apologize. Um, to me, the word retard or retarded, uh, it means like to slow down. Like if something is flame retard and it will slow down the flame kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can appreciate other people have used that uh, with a much more pejorative context against people with disabilities, mm -hmm. which it goes without saying is obviously disgusting. Um, I, I am going to throw it out there that as far as I can tell, the word retard has long been used for for, for, you know, for, for the context of slowing down. And when we were talking about nationalism, um, that, that, that is an idea that I believe is slow by modern standards and does slow us down as a society. Um, so that was where I was coming from. It. Uh, yeah, if someone was offended, I, I do apologize. I wasn't trying to offend no one. 
maybe nationalists. I was trying to offend nationalist ideas, so <laughs> uh, maybe those guys. But yeah, yeah. If, if, if you took offense to that because of other connotations it can have, um, my bad. I do apologize. Yeah, and that's another reason I wanted to bring it up. Like I know you well, and I know that you you never would have wanted to cause offense to anyone by it. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it's good for you to 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 say that as well, and then you can clear it up with anyone who doesn't doesn't know that. Um, yeah, I guess the sort of um, comparison I gave to it um, was um, from my point of view. Uh, I'm not I'm not someone who considers myself disabled. Um, um, and so it is a, a more outsider, I guess, point of view of it, um, and a less informed in terms of the the type of words that are associated with disability. Um, but yeah, the, the example I gave is a few years ago, maybe like six years ago, um, a good friend of mine who is mixed race, I t- said to them at the time, in a, in a throwaway comment, it wasn't offensive, it was just sort of within a, a sentence, I just said, um about him being half cast and he said to me and he is the most the nicest guy he 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 doesn't like confrontation he's really just the biggest peacekeeper and he actually called me out on it and said oh you you actually can't say half cast anymore i was like oh okay what what and i was really confused and he said half cast has negative connotations is actually not um an accepted word anymore it's it's mixed race um and yeah, I was taken aback by it and uh, I realized, oh, actually, no, it's not used anymore. And then I sort of came around. And that, uh, with retarded, that's where I'm coming from with it. My understanding, um, and I we did a bit of Googling afterwards um, in terms of the the term it's used for. And a, thing, a word that came up a lot is offensive. Um, my understanding is it's not, okay to use that in that context anymore it would be more uh, if you were talking about um the flame was retarded in like a um a laboratory um then that's that's a clinical sense and that's acceptable i my understanding is that you can't use it as a negative thing because you were saying you don't like nationalism which i agree with um yeah then it's kind of a dumb idea yeah and but so then using retarded as a negative thing to almost put down nationalism and and use it as a in that way do you see how that's sort of then miss maybe misusing it or using it in a sense that's not acceptable anymore i can see that i think i also see it from a different point of view where look i can appreciate that some other people, and maybe a lot of people have uh, put a lot of hate and fear and anger into that word. Um, I want to change that because I, and I don't think we do any ourselves any justice by banning words. I think when we ban a word, we, 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 we raise it up in, into a much worse status. Um, we make it worse by banning it. But then what would you say about the N word? Because do you agree that that well, should be here's the, Well, here's the thing and with the N word. I don't use the N word because it's only ever meant negative things um, uh, about black people to me. However, at the same time, I still think people should be allowed to say it. And for two reasons, A, the people use it as an offensive word. I want to know that they're dipshits, so I want them to be allowed to say it so I can go, oh, look, these people are the dipshits. Now we know who they are. Yeah. Um, And the second thing is, I would never say to like like Jay Z or Kanye West or any of these rappers, "Hey, you're not allowed to use the N word, buddy. That's a bad word." I guess my point from last time when we chatted was, uh, after the recording, was uh, we're not the people to make that word acceptable. Um, if if black people um, take ownership of the word and they say, "Well, this was used against us." Um, and we're we're the only ones that can say that this is acceptable and we're the only ones that can if if the majority or the feeling obviously you can never really do a a proper poll or know for sure what the majority is but if the feeling is that this word should not be used um then the only people that can say that so i guess in in terms of it yeah in terms of retard it would be if the disability community 
were using it and they were okay with it then they're the, probably the only ones that can and they're the ones to say it's or they're the ones to say it's acceptable or they're the ones to say it's not acceptable and my feeling is the disability community really are not comfortable with the word retard in a derogatory sense yeah and i can appreciate it because i'm well aware that that word has been used negatively um I, I would argue that society can change just the general definition of a word if enough people use it in a different way uh, which yeah. would always be my uh, my preference because I, I don't think saying hey we're not allowed to use this word uh, is, is ever a good way to go sure i i agree um but, but I, like, I can i can still like like, like to put this in context, so, so I, I got ginger hair. Um, anyone in the UK with ginger hair, they're going to grow up with a lot of shit. Um, <laughs> and to be very clear, the word ginger has only ever been used towards me in a negative, pejorative context. Right. And yeah, I, there is part of me that every time I hear that word, I, it's kind of like, ugh, it sounds like an uncomfortable thing down me now. But at the same time, I use the word ginger all the time because I'm just trying to change it to something that means orange hair. I, I'm trying to remove any, any form of hate or anger or, or animosity about the word i guess my point would be and I, I completely accept what you're saying and you're obviously coming from a good place in terms of wanting to do a good thing and want, wanting words to be less acidic and your way of doing that is you want to just say them uh, in a in a context that isn't against the people that they're offensive against it's just but my point would be if in doubt with something as sensitive as that, then um, if I don't know any better, then it's better to go on the on air on the side of caution. Um, because if you're if you're hammering trying to keep this word uh, going, 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 and y your mission is to to make it acceptable, but you end up just offending a load of people, it, you're not really achieving your end game. Here. No, I, I see that. I feel um, that. And there's not much of a a force. There, there's too. I feel there's too much force uh, against you to make that very successful. There is just that, just out of interest, just for your own sort of understanding. Um, I did a little bit of very quick research before we did we recorded today. Um, but there is actually a. Uh, I looked online just sort of the word and generally the stuff I was seeing. It's it's just it, it's not acceptable. But there is actually a grassroots movement that I've got like a really flash website and it looks really like it's been going for a while. Um, and their goal is to end um, the word retard. Um, because, and it was started by youth workers uh, to, to make people feel more included um, in stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Wait, there was a movement started to make people feel more included that involves telling people what they can't say. <laughs> so, that seems counterintuitive. So, okay, would you, if you were giving a, a lecture at um, um, a special needs school uh, or a school with people with learning difficulties, do you think it would be inappropriate to use the word uh, retard in the context that you did before? Uh, what kind of disabilities would we be talking about here? Uh, learning difficulties, I guess. Um. Yeah, I think it would be, and I, yeah, I think it, I, I, so to explain my thoughts here, I definitely wouldn't use it in that setting because to me, I would get, I, like, I would assume that the people around me would have a negative context about that word. And, you know, if, if it is a, a lot of people who are learning disabled, uh, there are some horrible people out there. So it, it would make sense that those people would have very negative connotations about the word. And if I'm doing a lecture, my intent is not to upset. Right. Right. So what you're saying is um, you wouldn't ever do in that situation um, because it could upset people, but um, you you feel like you still could or you should be able to. No, no, I don't I don't think in that situation um, it would ever be appropriate to use that word because in, in my head, like if you run like a chance thing, it, it, you're very likely someone's going to get upset or, oh yeah, you know, it's going to bring someone to tears or, or whatever. And that's, if, if I'm doing a lecture, the purpose of a lecture is to educate mm. or, or to, you know, fill people with confidence, something like that. It's, it's not to go there and upset people. And it's not for me to prove a point on what words 
should or should not be allowed. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess my point was like, uh, people can feel excluded um, if certain words are said. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not. I don't disagree with you at all here, and I definitely, yeah. you know, don't want people to stop listening to either of us mm. because they heard that word. That, yeah. that, that, that's the last thing I want. Um, mm. I will, uh, like, in the future, I definitely won't use that word on this podcast. Um, that, that's for sure, because I can see a point. Our intent isn't to upset people here. It's just it's to have, like, a good discussion about things, and I don't want, I don't want anything to detract from that. Cool. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And, and I also respect the fact that you have your views on it and that you go on your own journey with it, you know, whether you decide in a few years that you're not going to use it anymore or you decide that you, you still feel it's okay to carry on. That's that I respect that that is completely your choice in your own in your own life. Yeah, man. And, and I don't think this is a black and white thing. And I think you've raised a lot of good points here. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Well, yeah, um, cool. I think I think that's that's enough to talk about that. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that you were able to get your point of view across because, um, yeah, I think you only have. Good well, thank intentions. you for calling me out on it because, from my own perspective, like as I said at the start, a lot of I use it all the time. A lot of my friends use it all the time. So for me, it's just kind of common vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, we'll leave that there, and uh, we'll carry on with the. Uh, with the political compass. Hell yeah, where did we get to? I feel like we should have like a theme tune coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So we just finished um, question 11, which was from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. And your answer was strong disagree. <laughs> and mine was a soft agree um so let's leave that there because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it could take not even just a whole episode it could take like three episodes for us to to find common ground but i think yeah uh i got your point of view i think you got parts of mine um, it really it really could take three episodes just before we jump into the next question <laughs> I, I, I told my girlfriend about it and i had the exact same debate that i oh, had really? with, you with her <laughs> yeah <laughs> does she agree with me then she, she does, yeah. She was, she, she said she'd go soft degree as well. <laughs> okay, nice, cool. Well, yeah, it was good. Um, sweet. So the next question is um, number twelve: the freer the market, the freer the people. Um, and just to Ooh, remind that's... everyone, it's strong disagree, disagree, agree, or strong agree. So yeah, carry on. That's the tricky one. Um, I do believe somewhat in free markets mm. um the problem with the free market is it, it can lead to sketchiness it can also lead to monopolies which then you know they, they gain some extraction and power that no one else could ever catch up so it's not really a free market anymore mm. oh i think for me this would be soft agree the reason for that being is i i generally think think for most industries and markets it's better to have like 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 if i'm going on a percentage basis it's more than 50 percent that i think it's better for the markets to have it to be more free mm -hmm. at the same time there are tons of markets that i think oh i think there should be some government restrictions there sure yeah i think i think on the whole um we're on the same page with this I, mine would be a soft degree as well um uh yeah, I think there are problems, and the whole idea actually of a free market is is sort of flawed in it in itself. Um, uh, people give tariffs to even the most free economy like uh, the United States. Um, uh, they have tariffs, they have uh, regulations that you know it's never completely free. Um, and I know that a, a lot of developing co countries struggle because it's not as free as it could be in terms of they get some uh, regulations that, that other high income countries don't get they get um sort of tariffs and things like that um so it's not it's not a fair competition um but yeah um I, I completely agree you need you need regulations the free market isn't good for stuff like the environment it's not good for for uh, health and safety generally it's it's not really going to sort that out that effectively so yeah, I think I think we're on the same page. 
cool um variety. yeah yeah it's nice to have variety um cool so number 13 it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product uh, I think it's a strong disagree. Oh, I think it's a strong disagree. I think we're going to disagree again. Then, wow, let's go again. Um, and I'm not, and I'm not sure on my argument. I guess the way I'm thinking it through is like, hey, drinking water is not that easy to come by. Like, uh, unless you're getting it out of the river. Like, if someone just went, yo, there's the ocean, I'd be like, right, but how do I get drinking water out of this? <laughs> so, unless I was by, like, and, and I don't think, I don't know if you can get drinking water from a lake or not because it's still water. I think for the river, you'd be okay. And again, I'm not a survivalist. I was never in scouts. I'm, this is just me chatting shit about watching about two episodes <laughs> of Bear Grylls. But, but in our society, we're talk- it says in our society. So, you know, a- apart from now where, you know, but, we can't go in any pub, but if you're really thirsty, like you can just walk into anywhere and legally they have to give you some drinking water. Well, well, if you went to like a convenience store or something, you'd have to buy it. It's only in pubs that serve alcohol that they have to give you a free water. I think cafes, anywhere that, yeah, sell. I think anywhere that has a tap and like sells. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, it's 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 pretty easy in our society to to get drinking water. Would you say? Yeah, and I guess I guess that is that people are lazy, but at the same time, like like for, for me, I'm someone who works a lot. I, I, yeah, I work a shitload, um, and I have this habit of I'll buy like a big like twenty pack of liter bottles of water from Costco, mm. uh, and just when I'm getting into it, and I'm like working you know sometimes two days in a row sometimes a whole weekend really without getting any proper sleep or whatever and i'll just be churning through those waters and that'll be like that that'll save me so much time Mm, right i guess i can are you about to make the argument that right but doesn't it show that everyone's goddamn lazy uh i think there's a couple of things really because i was thinking about it and i I, I would say a soft agree for me, or just actually just an agree. I do agree with it. Um, so the, the flip side, actually, I'll just start with why I agree. Um, it's the reason it's a sad reflection of society is, yeah, so the, it's a lazy thing. Um, it's it's something that is, is ridiculous when you think about it, like water in itself in its purest form is drinkable. Like if it, when it comes down in rain and it's, you know, it's trickling down streams on in like mountains and things like that um it's it's drinkable in in that sense um and the fact that we have to bottle it and put it on shelves to have it be drinkable is a bit ridiculous um but also i think the other reason it's a sad reflection is is just the environmental side um it's it's a sad reflection that in in this society anyway i'm not talking about um low-income countries because their access to drinking water is is very difficult and getting a load of bottled waters to people that don't have access to that is a much better idea but in this country you just you just like if you if you live in a house if you're not homeless you you just fill up at home or if you go to work you fill up there you just have a bottle with you or you just don't even have to have a bottle with you just just drink you know go into a pub or, or at your work there's probably cups or you know when you're at home you just drink the tap water it 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 seems like a a bit of a sad reflection that we have to do so many bottles like the amount of plastic amount of just even though it's not plastic just waste that's just not necessary i think that is a sad reflection that's a good point yeah that's a very good point i didn't really think about the environmental impact um you know plastic bottles water yeah, I think uh, uh, I think your argument there has actually changed my opinion on this. I think I'd go from strongly disagree to a soft agree. Oh wow! Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think the, the environmental argument has uh, kind of changed. I I don't think there's an issue with it being branded because we do that with all products. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the fact that we're turning out all these plastic bottles for water that is, you know, I totally forgot that it falls from the damn sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I totally I totally changed to like uh, an agree here. Sweet. Okay. 
2-0. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm joking. Um, cool. Um, number 14. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. Strong disagree. Uh, no, what if I just go and disagree? Okay, I'm going to go... I'm, I'm going to get... Oh, fuck me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go like... Average disagree. <laughs> so just disagree. Yeah, just 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 disagree. You just put that in one word. Just <laughs> yeah, I owe the four there. <laughs> yeah, I think because I think right. If 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 no land should ever be bought, a commodity that's bought and sold, who owns the land? Who decides what goes there and what it's used for? How the hell does that work? Where do I sleep? Um, mm. But at the same time. I think things like parks, greenery, like forests, I don't think they should be bought and sold. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and, but know, even that, it's to be fair, that, even that is bought or it's, it's, it's owned, you know, it's owned by the council, or it's owned by the government. So I guess in some way it's sort of, you know, it's owned and therefore it can technically be, be bought and sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm okay with it being owned as long as it's being owned by the state. Yeah, because those those things really are for everyone. Mm, sure. Um, so, oh yeah, you're right. You've convinced me. I'm gonna go strong disagree on this one. <laughs> Wasn't my intention. Um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna go disagree. Um, so yeah, um, I think because I do sympathise with people, and I I would really like to hear from someone who has more of an understanding about land. Um, for example, actually, uh, this is a good example. So um, me and my girlfriend lived in New Zealand for a couple of years. And there's, so so you have land that was owned by the Maori people, which were, who were the indigenous people before uh, the European settlers came and um, did a basically a, a, a sort of semi- um, uh, in, uh, in, in, in disingenuous agreement with them. Anyway, the, the, there was a lot of land was taken off the uh, the indigenous people, and there's there's still to this day there's a lot of dispute over the land, and there's still some of the land is being put back into indigenous people's hands. Some of it is still contested, and some of it is just not getting anywhere. Um, and there's a, so there's a lot of problems with that sort of historically in terms of land um and also this whole th there's a there's a lot more connection with the land uh, uh to to the more uh the maori people there um and also there was this this problem with which i think is a, a problem in in every country but uh, outsiders buying land and not really using it so there was a there was a big political debate around um, uh, Chinese people buying land in New Zealand and using it as a holiday home. But there would be really, really rich sort of like millionaires who would buy buy some land and, and it would be such a big stretch of land and they would hardly ever use it. And it would just be this, this what could have been used for such better purposes. Um, so I sympathise with that, and I sympathise with that. If if land is too much on a free market, then you get situations like that where it's just not used for the right purposes. Um, and like you say, like you know, public spaces and things like this, it can't just be freely sold and and bought. And because yeah, it's so precious. Um, it's maybe one of our most precious things that we can have um, is land. Um, especially now uh, with the population of the earth. Um, but yeah, I think the reason I, I do disagree that it shouldn't be a commodity to be bought or sold is just, it's not practical. If we lived, if we lived in us, but because of the fact that there's so many people on earth, it, it has to, like a lot of land has to be bought and sold. Um, I agree that like you say, some land should be owned by the state. Some land should be sacred. Some land should be untouched. But land is there's lots of land that will have to be bought and sold because there's just so many people on this planet, you can't you can't not have it. Yeah, the the, the news. Yeah, the um the thing in New Zealand with the um the, that 
that, that people who it, it sounded like they were having their land stolen. Yeah, yeah, pretty um, much. I don't think that's a problem with land being a commodity to be bought and sold. I think that's a problem with theft. Yeah, that's true. Like yeah, it, it yeah. seems to me like look, if they were there first, and you don't, you can't really claim it. Yeah, but the whole thing of bought and sold is more. It, it, it wasn't. It was a lot more. Uh, it was very, very different. The people that were coming in, uh, you know, the indigenous populations didn't have the same trade systems and the same sort of monetary systems as uh, the European settlers. So it's. Yeah, the whole idea of it being yeah, born and I sold can is, see that. Yeah, I, I I can see that, but at the same time, like it, 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 if a civilization hasn't established that yet, it doesn't matter. They're on the land; that's their land. If you then go onto that land, and push them out, you are taking their land. Yeah. 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 Is it is a difficult one because then you you could say, well, should all should all the settlers who went to New Zealand and and you know America and Brazil and all all the um, colonialism should they all leave because it's all built off of stolen land? Oh, great questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The United States. I mean, fuck. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, we're we're sort of in agreement. You 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 with a strong disagree. Do you reckon or? Yeah, I think I'd stick with the strong disagree. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I think your point about uh, just ease of use uh, and how it's so impractical. We don't really have any other better way to do this. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the next one, number 15. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. So, oh, strong agree. Strong agree. Yeah, there's, oh man, there's a famous quote, um, and I'm going to totally mess it up here, but it's something on the lines of, uh, to turn $100 into $110 is work. To turn $100 million into $110 million is inevitable. Right. Oh, that's um, really cool. And I totally agree with that. And anyone who started investing in you know, these shocks, uh, shares, hedge funds, where all people are actually doing is moving money around, you, you'll know that the more money you've got, the way bigger return you're going to get out of these things. And it's actually all some fake, crappy, bullshit, fictional money system anyway that doesn't improve mankind as a race, doesn't help push us forward, doesn't really do any good. Wow. Um, so... One thing I'm confused about with this, are we commenting on it being regrettable or are we commenting that, or or is it stating that it's a fact and we're agreeing that it's a fact or not? Because it says it is regrettable. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, um, well, yeah, yeah, you're saying I strongly agree that it is regrettable that all these personal fortunes, like there are a lot of personal fortunes that are made by... Um, you know, you know, people who are just moving money around. Yeah. Um, see, I think if that is the case, then it is regrettable. So I strongly agree it is regrettable if that is the case. But I don't strongly agree that many people's fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to society. Do you, do you know what I mean? I yeah, I guess I don't know, like, what the percentage is. Like I, I definitely know that. Like I think it's, I think I could probably go one hundred percent. That I think there are a fair few personal fortunes from descendants of people, descendants of famous families. Mm. Um, you, you know, in in three hundred years' times, if we don't change the way things are going, the Zuckerbergs will be that way, and there'll be some name that's heralded with wealth, like the Rothschilds, for example. Yeah, thing is, I'm actually slightly softer on this than you are. Um... I think it, it is regrettable if that is the case, but I don't actually think that is the case uh, necessarily. Uh, many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to society. I just, there's a lot, there's a lot of rich people out there that are doing amazing things for society and are giving back. And um, But this isn't, this isn't, 
kicking back at that. It, it's a, it's saying it's regrettable. If I if I would, uh, it is regrettable that quite a few personal fortunes. What would you say then? Right. Okay. So so your point is on the fact that it's regrettable. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Because I, I think like, and, and I'm not saying there's a lot of people out there like that. I don't know what its percentage is like, but the fact that that is the case, um, I, I definitely think there are people from families, whatever, um, in, in both the UK and the United States where it's like that. And the reason I'm so strong on this is because I don't think those fortunes all like generally do a good like thing to the people that get them and then don't really do anything with their lives. I think no, that's yeah, actually going to mess someone up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I um okay, well let's forget the whole word many. Let's just say the people the people that do exist that manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society is that bad and then I would strongly disagree. I would strongly agree with that and agree with you. Um yeah, and like you say, I think Jordan Peterson says and I'm sure he's quoting other people, but um if you see it as like a graph where there's a line and on the left hand side it goes suddenly really far up it like there's a flat line in the middle a short flat line uh in the middle of the graph and then on the left about the exponential curve yeah so on the left it goes really far up and it goes what did you say exponential curve why did you try and explain what the graph no 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 no, because the, the other side of it is it going so the the left side picture going exponentially up and then the 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 right side is going exponentially down and the way he describes it is that he's talking to Russell Brand and the one that I said and he said is it for you that as soon as you started getting money and you started being famous that you had more and more opportunities that you didn't know what to do with and you at that stage now and he was like yeah and he's saying like as soon as you start like you were saying once you get a million it's inevitable you'll get 10 million like you just go on an up upward you get to a certain point like a tipping point and things just start to almost like fall into place and the same with the downward slope as well things start going wrong and then it, it can be a downward slope very very quickly um yes. to That's, yeah that goes back to the whole homelessness thing of like man these people really don't get a fair second chance exactly and and, and all homeless charities will say um anyone could become homeless well within reason obviously but you know it could it could happen to the average person easily um because you know you go bankrupt or you know you all your relationships gone or you just you know you have too many drinks and you become an alcoholic or you you know whatever it is these these human there's a lot of traps there's yeah, a lot of traps exactly and it's just a downward spiral um and yeah so i i i agree with with that that if there's people out there who are manipulating money just to get more and they're contributing nothing it's just it's almost a scourge of society in a sense it's like well, it's bad for these people as well. Like, like mm. it's like you know, for the vast majority of people, their life is very easy. They're, they're, they're all of their goals are revolve around money and making money. And I don't think that's a good way to go. But it's a, having goals is a good way to stop yourself from going insane. And if you're like, I don't know, let's say you're an 18 year old, you've just inherited a hundred million. It's like, well, you don't need any more money. You've got a bunch of people that can turn that money into more money. Mm. What do you want to do now? Yeah 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 no you're absolutely right and that that's actually a point that i think is really under mentioned is that a lot of these people with if they're so focused on money and just always looking ahead to more 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 like it like you say it'll just decrease their happiness so much it's not they're not doing anything for themselves um they're not doing anything yeah. good for themselves by being in that mindset um i sort of went through a shift like that a few years ago so during uni, I was I was very, very focused, which I still am, but I was very, very focused on happiness and positivity. And I was I became what I look back on as a lot more selfish than I am now. I, I became because I was so focused on me being happy, um, I I I was uh, not as considerate to other people's feelings, I was not as considerate to um yeah, when, when people were down, because if people were down, then that's negative, and that would maybe bring me down, and it's not good. Um, and I realized it was a book uh, called Altruism, um, and it's a big book, um, and 
I read it and I'd already been sort of thinking about things as well and sort of st- my mind was starting to change not just because of that but I started to look into volunteering I started to just think about things a bit differently and and I started to change my mind I was like wow actually happiness doesn't it shouldn't be just just me it it if I've if I spread the my view for what I want uh to be happiness for as many people as possible for as much as possible then the happiness within me naturally became a lot more fuller it became a lot more wholesome and that that actually came true and I, and I, there's no way I'd be turning back now because even on a purely selfish level I feel so much better and it really I guess it's the difference between having um, a McDonald's or having a proper full rounded meal where you get all your nutrients you get all your your, your meat and your veg and your, your bit of carbs and do you know what I mean it, the, the happiness that I described that I felt when I started to change my mind and realized oh no I'm looking out for other people as well in this and it's all part of one thing that's um, awesome man I felt a more wholesome happiness um so yeah <laughs> that's beautiful right there that is uh <laughs> that's beautiful I'll put it on a plaque. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, sweet. So we're we're strongly agreeing with that one. Yeah. Cool. Um, Sixteen. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. Uh, protectionism. So protectionism is, well, my understanding of it is that uh, when it's it's a lot of what Trump's been doing. So, um, you you put high tariffs on imports. I think this is what it is anyway. You put high tariffs on imports, so then you can boost uh, the the production and manufacturing and just the general industries in your own country. So, if you put high tariffs on Chinese goods, for example, then then the Chinese goods become more expensive to the consumer in America. And therefore, they're less a viable option. And the, and the oh, is this like the WTO's uh, what's it called, the anti-dumping um, laws they have in place? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, uh, like like, like uh, because China will always like like for example, I mean, I, to be very clear, to my knowledge, the WTO only ever enforced these with China, or at least <laughs> it's predominantly with China. Right. But but, but it's uh, like they 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 input these. Um, yeah, essentially, it's an extra cost that you've got to pay if you're, let's say, China importing cheap bicycles into uh, the UK because you'll just kind of churn out all these cheap products really quickly. You'll put them in the economy. They'll be sat around, dead weight. They won't really go anywhere, but because they're so cheap, you can get them in there uh, because they're just so much cheaper than everyone else's. So yeah. you essentially dump them there. Like, that's a very dumbass way to say it. But yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Like, if anyone wants more information, you can Google it, but there's a lot of information. A lot of people that will explain it far better than me. Um, and to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty strongly disagree with this. You disagree? Yeah. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. I, I don't... I don't think it is. For me, I'm very much in open borders. We should have open trade. You know, if you accept a bunch of cheap ass stuff, a bunch of crappy products that are gonna, you know, swell in your inventory, that's on you. Hmm. So yeah, for me, it's a it's a strong disagree. It also that's a good way of keeping poor countries poor. It's also it's also I might add it, it's a way of saying it's a way of kind of forcing out. Um, yeah, it's a way of forcing out poorer countries because you can say, well, the stuff that's made in, inside the country, we won't tax more. And the stuff that you bring in, we will. Way Good luck keeping up, motherfuckers. Yeah. I think I'll have to agree. Oh, that, that is mad. I did not see this coming. Yeah. yeah. Just so I disagree with you. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I will agree because I think, like you say, it is true uh with a lot of scenario with some scenarios uh it it really helps to have the no tariffs on especially low income countries and the massive uh advance 
of India, of China, uh, of Singapore, the, uh, of uh, South Korea. These are countries that were very, very poor or they were very, very low income countries um, a few decades ago, but they were able to trade more. They were basically to, to buy into this this capitalism capitalism system, this globalization, and they, they just went on a massive up, upward trajectory. Um, those four countries I know definitely did. Um, so I definitely agree that if you have too much protectionism and if it's used in the wrong way, then it really can dampen down on these low-income countries, which is a bad thing. I think we need to be supporting these low-income countries and really, yeah, for everyone's sake, uh, yeah, make them make them richer. But I th it says protectionism is sometimes necessary, and I think it probably is. And I think um, when you I can I can definitely see like a couple of fringe cases where it would be relevant. Well, if I if I was to agree, it would be like a millimeter into the agree, like a, like a nano, like a tiny tiny amount. Well, let me give you an example of where I think protectionism is used actually quite widely and arguably well. So we don't have big wars anymore. Like the last war between the huge countries like uh, Russia and America and you know France and England and all, all, all of these wars have stopped for a very, very long time uh, since, well, since... not since, that long. Okay, well, since the Second World War, which was is a, is a long period of time when you look at 80 years one lifetime sure but before that it was much more frequent like these wars were happening all the time like it was normal yes, it, sir. it was more it was more normal that yeah it was like they saw peace as just a, a break from war like war was was the normal it was very frequent um so compared to before that this is a long stretch of time um, and what we have now is a system where we go to war with people, but it's done through trade. So protectionism. So, so for example, when um, the Russians, uh, you know, this whole, I've forgotten the name, but they poisoned someone in uh, the north of England, in the Midlands. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. yeah, so it was... It was Allegedly. Well, I think it was pretty much proven. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that, um, it was the Russians that did it. Um, uh, but there's sanctions. So sanctions, I believe, is to do with trade. And it's when you you make sure that countries, when they're trying to when they're trying to sell to you, and stuff, that you make the tariffs higher and you make it so that they they take a big hit to their economy as much as you can. Um, with Iran, uh, America put sanctions on Iran because they. They didn't agree with what they're doing. And so when, when countries start to play dirty, which a lot of countries do all the time, um, this yeah, is... Our own is included, a... I might add. You what? Our own included, I might add. I don't think... I don't think... I think we've probably got less bad shit going on than, say, the likes of Russia, but do I believe any of our governments have ever been, you know, 100% pure and kosher? Fuck no. No, definitely not. But... When you compare um, England to Iran politically, it's you can't even compare. Like the all of the different horrible stuff. Civilization, different social norms, totally yeah, totally different. Yeah, but when you treat your women like how they do in Iran, it's yeah, it's you, it, like it's sure, disgusting. Let's yeah. say what it is. It, exactly, it's really putrid behavior. Stuff, stuff that. Like I like to think I know we're not, I and mean, we still got some growing to do there. But generally, that's considered really fucking unacceptable here. Exactly, um, and I think basically to to sort of good or bad, and uh, I guess this is another discussion itself. Um, maybe to have on another episode, but uh, putting up p imposing our values on these countries. Um, through protectionism is a, is a way to do that. Um, yeah, I think that's actually switched me to a strongly agree. <laughs> and it's a combination of that and the way this is worded. The yeah. fact that it says sometimes, because I, I do believe that probably 99% of the time it's unnecessary, but sometimes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah I think I, I definitely think I interpreted the question incorrectly. And I don't think at some points you brought up. Yeah, strongly agree on that one. Wow. 
There you go. That was a big flip. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, number 17. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Uh, this is... Uh, this, hmm, I would go strongly disagree. Yeah, I, I agree um, with you. Because strongly disagree. I think that any, I think that any company, they shouldn't just be about profit, but I can, I can view this in a very different way that says, hey, look, if a company does despicable things, generally their share price will go down, people will stop buying their product. So there's actually like, you know, you know, consumer motivation, when consumers care about the environment and a company starts being environmentally conscious and starts putting in all this effort to, you know, be less harmful on the environment, hell yeah, people are gonna buy more of their products and, and respond to that, which makes them more profitable. But it says to its shareholders, which I also disagree with, because uh, I think it should be profitable for shareholders, but also really profitable for people who work within the company as well. Yeah. I also think... So it, stakeholders. Oh, I, yeah, I, I also think people... You, know, you can make a profit, but if you do it by grinding people into the ground, which companies do do... Yeah. That's also unacceptable because you know, it's coming at such a high cost of grinding people down. And that happens a lot in the games industry as well. Right. Okay. So, yeah, the, the more I think about this, the more it's a strong disagree. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm strong disagree as well. Um, pretty much the same, same reasons you said. Yeah. So what, what do you find in the game industry then? Uh, so it's common in the games industry, uh, especially it's been highlighted over the last say five years this term called crunch which is where people will work loads of overtime like you know we're just talking six working 60 hours a week for months on end sometimes more people not being able to see their real really family and kids like these things have happened there's some games out there that have some real horror stories to them for everyone that really enjoyed fable oh google the fable development hell and just read some of the the, the blogs that people have put up from people who worked on it because so some games companies do grind people to the ground. And, wow. Um, it's like, don't get me wrong. I am someone who believes if you want to get the, make the best possible game, you, you, you need more than a nine to five. Yeah. But I don't think you need, you know, 60 to a hundred hours a week for months on end. I actually think if you're doing that, then uh, that, that's a bad way to go. That's not sustainable. Was it expected of them? And was it imposed on them or, or was it just because they were really passionate and wanted to do it? Well, uh, it, there, there's lots of different examples. There are examples of like social pressure. I think there are examples out there of, you know, kind of staff saying, no, you need to stay late and sort this and things like that. Um, it, 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 yeah, it's different because it's a lot of different companies. It's also, I'm going on stories I've read on online, but at the same time, I'm in the games industry and I know a lot of, people in this industry who work in different companies and there are some real dickheady companies out there that still do this shit so so in the in the worst companies that you're talking about in the, in the yeah the companies that aren't as good as you're talking about um that they are imposing and they're they're expecting their employees to work like yeah yeah, and I, I also think they, they can do it passively with social pressure. You know, if you're a new employee at a studio and everyone there is working 60 hours a week, yeah. guess what, dude? You're now working 60 hours a week. Yeah, yeah, that is that is a real problem. Um, I didn't realize it was, but I guess it makes sense, but I didn't realize it was so, or can be really I think, I think game because it's had a lot of media surrounding it and it's really been brought up in the games industry, specifically a lot in the last five years companies are getting better right um there, there was a case of the company that makes gta uh they came under harsh uh, critique for this and from what i understand they've actually taken action and improved their internal workings now right i am going to throw it out there with rockstar it's a little bit different because from what i hear on the inside if you work at rockstar you're working a shitload of overtime you're also going to make bank for money oh, so okay okay there's a bit of a give and take there but that that is different, isn't it? That's like that is proper incentive. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the same time, like the, the QC, the testers of Rockstar who who worked all that overtime, did they make a lot of money? I don't know if that's the case. Mm. Yeah, I can even say for my own industry. So my main 
uh, work background has been filmmaking. And there's people I've never actually worked full time for a company. I've only ever been freelance filmmaking. Um, but yeah, I've I've met people who work. Um, yeah, people that have worked for companies, and I think it's yeah, like the games industry. It's not uncommon. It's yeah, there's there's people that you just you're expected to work on the weekend if there's a shoot that needs to be done, and and you won't get paid extra for it. Um, there was a guy I met last year who was working for a company and he he was been thinking about he'd been thinking about going freelance for a while but he was just unsure whether he'd get the same income and he had bills to pay and all this sort of stuff and yeah I asked him about it because I'd, I'd never worked for a company even though I'd heard stories and things and he's uh, he said yeah some there was a a week some weeks I worked like three like three weeks solid like no day off um, and if and if the work demands it because you need to do a shoot and then you need to get it edited by a certain time and all this sort of stuff, it's just accepting. I asked, did it? Do you get paid extra? And he's like, no, no. You just you get your salary and you're expected. To. And for me, that's ridiculous. And I, and I know there's lots of companies and industries that will say that it's needed. But if it is needed, pay them extra, surely. Yeah, give them something back. Yeah. Like that's that that's the thing. And 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 definitely don't you know, don't don't make it so the majority of someone's life now is now just work and sleep and that's it, because yeah. you've taken so much and you've given nothing back. And at least make it their choice, you know. If they, if they want to, as many freelancers do in any profession, because they they really wanna, you know, make not freelancers, sorry, any any sort of profession which, which people are uh, passionate about people will naturally work harder um and and if you say to them if you give them the choice you can work over this weekend and we'll give you extra then if they're the someone who wants to spend their whole life doing work then they can do it yeah it, it, it's their choice yeah so i think the problem lies there is uh whether that there is there is payoff for doing extra work and if there's not then i don't think i don't think that's okay especially in this day and age yeah yeah Cool. Okay. We went off on a bit of a tangent there, but that was interesting. <laughs> cool. Um, so we both... Oh, so what did we say? Uh, only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Um, yeah, I would strongly disagree. And you, Yeah, you just... like, likewise for that, yeah. Cool. I think that's a pretty short case to me. Cool. Um, the rich are too highly taxed. So this is, again, another strongly disagree... The reason I, I think that is because, don't get me wrong, I, I think the rich in general should be taxed more, not 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 like everything that they're, they're making, but the more you earn, I think the more you should be taxed. And the thing we're seeing currently is that the more money you have, the less money you're going to pay in tax because you can circumvent the system that's meant to bring that tax in by finding loopholes in these bullshit rules. Um, there's actually a Netflix explaining documentary on this. And even in that documentary, Mark Cuban, who is a billionaire, is in that documentary, and he just kind of goes, "Yeah, I'm not taxed very much." Yeah, and Bill Gates and even has said he is, it for years. Yeah, Bill Gates. Um, I can't remember. Is it Warren Buffett? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think Warren Buffett said something on the lines of, "Hey, my employees pay more tax than I do," and it's just like, "Fuck, man! How are we? How have we fucked this up so badly?" Yeah, yeah. I think that's brilliant. I think they're they're doing a brilliant thing when people who are that rich come out and say tax me more i think that that is a brilliant thing um because it, it i think it closes that divide if it's too much you know sort of people on low income saying the rich are taxed too much and the rich people go no we're not we're ta you know they're, they're not taxed enough and the rich people go no we're taxed too much and all this sort of stuff then it um creates the vibe but yeah it's good to have those people almost whistleblowers or sort of speaking out and going yeah we, we need to be taxed more um, yeah, it, it's also good because it shows on like billionaire side that they kind of feel that they have a social responsibility. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I I strongly agree. Oh, strongly disagree. <laughs> uh, yeah, likewise. Um, but I do have an interesting point about um, taxing. I don't necessarily think that we should be tax taxing big corporations more. so, so it, again if, if i was in power um 
I would raise the uh, tax on rich people, so their 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 personal income, in in a smart way that would make sure there's no loot, you know, closed loopholes and stuff like that. Um, but I would maybe I don't know. I'd have to get advice, but I I, I wouldn't necessarily raise um, corporation tax. I might even lower it or just keep it the same. Um, because I think I I'm a big believer in uh, encouraging business. Uh, business with regulation business with to make sure the bad people can't do bad things but i think on, on every level the small medium and large we should be encouraging businesses to to be in this country and to to yeah to to, to do that um i so i think yeah i'm i'm not i'm not as in favor of raising corporation tax i kind of I kind of agree and disagree with you. Mm. I, because a corporation is a body of people. Um, and I think if you didn't tax the company at all, I'd be very concerned about how do you make that a concrete system that people can't exploit. To me, that would, that would, that would make it a very easy thing to exploit. I think the thing that I would like to do is do like different, and we may do this, I don't know, but do like different tariffs. Like, like if you're a startup and you're not really making much profit, then okay, we're not going to tax that profit at all. Well, that's and pretty much what it is, I think. Oh, is it? It's not. It's not. It's not a flat rate or anything. No, no. So uh, I can only speak from being self-employed. I can't speak for limited companies. But I have to make a profit, not revenue. I need to make a profit of over now twelve grand to be taxed. Okay, well that's that that's good. I like that. And to pay national insurance, I think is like just over six grand. I have to make again in profit. So, yeah. Um, so in that sense, it's actually, yeah. So we are actually quite good with that. Um, we do have like this whole section where you won't get taxed. And even even above twelve grand, you're only taxed on how much you're above that bracket. You're not taxed on the whole. Oh, that's good going. But um, cool. So, what what but, we? But, but in terms of the rich are highly too highly taxed. That's that's a strongly disagree, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, number nineteen. Those with the ability to pay uh, should have access to higher standards of medical care. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Um, so that's like a soft degree for me mm -hmm. because I think just from an economical point of view there are some treatments that like are so um, like cost in intensive to do they can't really just be offered up for everyone it's, it's not feasible like and then, so because of that uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know for sure but but um, like oh, what are they called it's like stem cell treatments for example right um i think those are like very expensive like like just in terms of like to get the stem cells and how you put them in i've, I've never had it done myself but from what i understand uh it's quite an expensive process and generally only the world they can mm -hmm. um afford them uh and, but yeah I, I think the more money that goes into stem cells is going to probably make it cheaper in the long run yeah yeah and that's definitely been the case with vaccines yeah oh is that true nice yeah so yeah i think i think it's like a it's an agree for me on this one cool yeah i would i would yeah agree maybe strongly agree um i think um it's sort of talking about the private sector in terms of healthcare, isn't it um and yeah, yeah. Some people say we should abolish private health care, but I don't think that does anyone any good. So um I actually think I came to this realization a couple of years ago, but it's it's if you're rich enough to afford private health care, it's more ethical to get private health care. Because because it takes away less from like your public. Exactly. Service. So if you're not yeah. using the NHS, using your private health care, using Bupa or whatever then that money that would have been spent by the NHS and the state and, you know, and go to people that can't afford health, you're, you're taking that burden off, you know, and especially if you have it for life, like uh, the amount of 
money that you know, so i had a, i think i mentioned it before in our podcast but i had an uh, an adrenal tumor and it took many many tests over five years many sort of going into rushed into hospital a few times i was uh, at one point i was in my own private room uh, on a cardiology ward um, and i was there for like five days just in a private room with an ensuite um, and so and the surgery i had with you know and all, all these things over the years i would love to know how much it cost but it would have cost a hell of a lot i think hundreds of thousands in terms of if you if you include all the gp appointments or everything um and but if i if i had private health care none the state wouldn't have paid for any of it or very little of it um so yeah um I think I think it's good, it's good to have a private private sector so that the people who can afford it can can get out the way of the uh, public sector. Yeah, and then people can then research these uh, you know new medicines that yeah. hey maybe at the start only a couple of people can pay for, but then after that way more can pay for. No, like, that's a way really more good can point. afford. Yeah, I hadn't even. So thought yeah, that. strongly agree. You've uh, you've swayed me down. Yeah, I think you've swayed me as well. Sweet. So strongly agree on that. Um, Right, we'll do one more, and then we'll probably have to bring it to an end. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, we're on one hour ten already. <laughs> Governments should penalise businesses that mislead the public. I mean, if you're governments should mis- should governments should penalise businesses that mislead the public. I would say, yeah. Was, if you're lying to people, deceiving them, misleading them, so yeah, if, if you're kind of insinuating something is true without actually saying it, then yeah, you should be penalized for that shit. Like, just be honest. Don't try and deceive people. Yeah. No, I, I would say I'm, a, I'm a, an agree, not a strongly agree, just because it's difficult to define mislead. So uh, Carlsberg, their thing is probably the best beer in the world. You could say that's misleading because there's no data to say it's probably the best beer in the world, um, and therefore. Nah, you... but it's it's it, the word there is probably that makes it okay. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Um, but, but I even think if they I think said the, it was the marketing... best beer in the world. Sorry. Even if they said it was the best beer in the world. Yeah, I yeah, just. Yeah, I, I guess it's a subjective thing. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I just think like marketing in general is supposed to put an image on and is in essence a little bit misleading. You know, it's sort of it, when when McDonald's release a salad which actually has more calories than some of their burgers, that of course they're gonna release it as like, oh, we're doing salads healthy, and they'll have things like that, uh, which in itself is misleading, but if you go into the, the the details of it and you actually look how many calories or how much shit it's got in it, then you'll see because they can't actually lie. So I just think you need to have some level of misleading with any marketing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like your definition of marketing there. Um... But I, I still agree with this because I think if you can prove that a company is genuinely misleading and especially lying um then they should definitely be penalized yeah i think uh, i think i'd still strongly agree i think i think there can be i think there can be like i think you could put out like a clear distinction Mm. um and you know if say if people started you know if companies started advertising fake statistics for example for example um I think you could define it quite nicely there. But hey, look, if you say things like this that you can't back up, mm. then yeah, we're coming after you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I do see a point though. It is, it is, it is subjective. There's always going to be like a gray gradient in between. Um, but for me, I, I really think you could make it cut and dry. So yeah, strongly agree. So why don't you feel like that about people needing things? <laughs> uh uh because that gets so much trickier someone <laughs> else deciding what everyone else needs Ooh-y. yeah that was just a little joke <laughs> the, last, <laughs> the last conversation we had it went on for a long time and it was pretty much all around the word the definition of need um, <laughs> but um yeah okay i think we'll probably leave it there for now 
We're, that was awesome, man. We're, we're, we've done two episodes on this, and we're not even a third of the way through. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It's all good fun. Uh, hopefully someone, uh, someone enjoys these episodes. But yeah, no, I've, I've definitely enjoyed it, so. Yeah, me too. And worst case scenario, no one listens. I've personally have learned a shitload. It's always nice. We have somewhat similar views, but then we kind of approach subjects from a different position, which is nice. Mm, yeah. And, and I think we go off and, you know, when we go off on tangents, that talks about something interesting. Like, I didn't know about the games industry, um, sort of having this thing of expectation, people to work overtime and things like this. So, yeah, I think... It, even in itself, we end up talking about things that are, are interesting. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'll just say to anyone listening, uh, please feel free to continue this conversation by commenting with any thoughts you have. Uh, you can comment on YouTube. You can comment on Facebook. Um, or you can contact me to come on as a guest on the show. Um, I want to create a sort of thirst for people to come on the show and chat about anything they feel passionate or curious about. Um, so yeah please get in touch I'd love to know your views uh, and your own stories um, but yeah final thing to say is just thank you very much Nick thank you so much for having me man these are always enjoyable sweet we'll, we'll get into it next time I look forward to seeing you there man take it easy you too there's something else I'd like to say to any listeners all three of you this podcast is an ongoing process it's an ongoing experiment I'm trying things out and seeing what works and what doesn't. And so any feedback on this or other episodes will be really appreciated. I don't want this podcast to just be for my own enjoyment. The goal is for it to benefit people in some way. And constructive feedback is the best way to know if this goal is being achieved. If I don't know something's rubbish, then I'll just keep producing rubbish. If I don't know something's good, then I'll just stop producing anything good. And also, if you think of anyone that you know that would be a good guest for me to chat to, then please let me know. I would love the opportunity to speak to a wide range of people about an even wider range of subjects. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I hope you continue the conversation. Bye for now.